Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Galatians with Kurt Bjorklund. In Galatians 2, 11, we see the second big issue of Galatians 2, and this is table fellowship. It says this, when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, uh, it says for so when certain men from James uh, came, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. So circumcision group still having an influence and Cephas um, was uh, eating with the Gentiles until the circumcision group showed up. And then he said, well, you know what? I can't really eat with you anymore because this group would be offended. Okay, that, that's what's going on. And Paul says, I opposed him to his face. Verse 13, the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. Now, table fellowship to us doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Joachim Jeremias uh, says this, New Testament scholar in Judaism, table fellowship before God for eating of a piece of broken bread by everyone who shares in a meal brings out the fact that they all share the same blessing with the master of the house has that he's spoken over the unbroken bread. In other words, you were symbolically saying we, if we eat together, are affirming something about this group. And so the circumcision group wasn't completely crazy to say, wait wait a second, these people are uncircumcised. They don't follow the law of God. They don't follow Moses' law. Why should we bless them in fellowship? And and then there was the secondhand thing where it's like, and you, because even though you, Peter, Cephas, are circumcised, you are eating with uncircumcised people. This is the old secondhand thing. Uh, thing where it's like, because you're too friendly with these people, then you can't, can't be part of whatever it is that they're doing. And, and, and so this just drives to this idea, this, this, um, th- this reality that basically says, I have to preserve the gospel. This is the steward, kind of what Paul is here saying, I'm stewarding, I'm protecting the gospel, I'm fighting for God. And it's Paul who challenges that. He takes on Peter's stewardship because it's wrong. And this is so important as part of gospel culture and being a steward or faithful to the gospel, not embracing a different gospel as Galatians talks about being willing to challenge those who impose non-biblical standards into the world of faith. Where they, now again, when I say non-biblical, I don't mean that they're not right in how they interpret or understand the Bible, but they're adding it to the, the mark of fellowship. They're saying, you cannot have fellowship with somebody who does not agree with me on these issues. And so you're elevating certain things to be to be almost gospel level rather than simply saying this is a, a secondary matter in terms of faith. One writer said this, we are all reputation conscience, conscious. Some of us have a reputation. It may be for piety, efficiency, leadership, preaching, housekeeping, anything. Others of us wish to have a reputation. Once acquired, we assumed... It can haunt us, dog us, browbeat us, wear us to shreds. Bondage to a reputation can be sheer slavery, and yet it can form a struggle for our own righteousness. The struggle for righteousness consequently becomes a struggle for appearance, which simply means that somewhere we end up being dishonest about ourselves. What a relief when we see Christ as the end of all this. He is the end of the struggle for righteousness. And so what was going on in some ways was the circumcised group wanted to appear righteous. Circumcised people weren't righteous, so they wanted to only be with people who agreed with them and saw it the right way. And you see this all the time in churches where people, especially when when churches do the only the faithful show up, 
And so they, they see smallness as a sign of faithfulness to God because we don't accept anybody who isn't, isn't really right like us. And the end of our own righteousness is when we run to the righteousness of Christ. And this is part of the gospel. And we need to challenge that. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that there's never a time for a standard. Paul had some hard standards. He practiced church discipline. But, but what this text is saying is be very careful that you don't take something that is not essential to the gospel and make it a test of fellowship. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.